Hi, I'm Joel. I thought I'd show you this uh, new engine conversion that we did to this P172D. Um, this is the Continental IO370. This is a 195 horse, uh, four cylinder, fuel injected with a constant speed Hartzell Trailblazer propeller. This STC is done by uh, Stutes Aviation out of Alaska. So I kind of like seeing new uh, installs or any installs anytime people are doing any type of work under the cowling. I like to see what, how people do stuff and, and that. So that's why I'm sharing this. Um, uh, just uh, it's a kind of a newer conversion. I don't know how many of those of these that he's put out. I think he's somewhere in the 40s maybe, but I don't know for sure. Um, my number was number 33, I believe, on the STC, so he sold a number of those. So um, I'm just going to give you a quick overview of, of what we have. Pictures are better than words, so I'll kind of let the camera talk. Um, so this, the P172D, is, uh, was the last-ditch effort of uh, Cessna made with the Cessna 175s. Um, so this originally had the Continental GO uh, 300, the gear drive. Um, so this type, this is built off the same type certificate that the C-175s are. The, the 317A is the build certificate on this particular airplane. So it's a P172D, it doesn't fit in with the 70, 172s, it doesn't fit in with the 175s, it's in between. So Cessna called it the Cessna Powermatic. So um, the STC went quite well. Um, there is some modifications that we have to do. Um, different things like anything, you know, we're going from a whole new, a whole new engine mount being with the GO. Um, we did, uh, a couple upgrades on it, I guess. I don't know about upgrades, but um, I didn't have an engine monitor on there before, so we put the EDM 930 in it. Um, I actually had to get a field approval for that EDM 930 because uh, they didn't have the STC for this model and this engine yet. So we had to get a fuel approval for that. And then I also did a firewall mounted battery box there. As you can see, I did an Atlee Dodge. Um, I also had to get an STC for that, uh, not an STC, a field approval. The only model, the P172D, was the only model that wasn't spelled out. So uh, had to get a field, approf uh, field approval for that. Both of those were quite easy to get from the FAA, but nevertheless, we had to get those. So uh, right here, I've got a Tannis heater on it. Um, we've got uh, probe on each cylinder on each side and then there's also a pad uh, on the sump on the bottom they do not run one on the top of the case on the four cylinders big six cylinders they got a pad on the bottom and one on the top um, pretty straightforward I will say this is one modification we had to do here uh, so this uh, P172D came with cowl flaps and uh, the only 172 with cowl flaps so we had to kind of make a, a, a new bracket there to actuate those uh, cowl flaps. I'm going to do another video of how that cowl fits and what that looks like uh, later on in another video. I just wanted to give an under the hood look here to kind of see what that STC looks like. Um, the air box, uh, you'll, we'll see on the cowling, um, I had to make a small tunnel for that air box to fit in. Um, after the fact, uh, Stutes Aviation said they do have a different style that might fit that cowling a little bit better. So later on, we might redo that and put a different modification, uh, remod that uh, cowling, but gonna leave it as is for now. Alternate air source right there. Fuel servo, of course, being a fuel injection. Uh, yeah, pretty straightforward stuff. So this is the, uh, the Hartzell Trailblazer. This is an 80 inch. Um, we can go with, uh, standard would be a 76 inch. Uh, but with, we went to the, the big nose fork and the bigger tires. They're 850s on the back, 800s up front. 
we we're able to go to the 80 inch propeller. We still have 14 inches of clearance um, with the nose wheel all the way flat. Um, I don't have the tire flat, but with the, with the fork all the way flat, uh, we still have 14 and a half inches of clearance up front. Uh, Steve's gas later went on there. That was STC'd. Um, they got a boost pump back there along with the Continental um, mechanical pump up there. Manifold pressure hose coming off the side. They mount these sensors up here, manifold pressure, oil pressure, and fuel pressure. Um, I don't like how that is done. I see like a lot of the RV guys, they've got a really nice uh, aluminum block that they're using to mount these three sensors to, which I think would be a lot, a lot better deal than what this is. So kind of a lot of wiring with the engine monitor and then along with these Tannis uh, engine heater just kind of gets uh, a lot busier, a lot of wires running and trying to keep out of there so anyway okay that's a big overview um I, the the uh the baffling is really tight you'll we'll see when we get the cowling on there we don't have very much room here between the cylinder head and uh rocker cover and the cowling so that is that gets to be really close on that cowling as that, that comes up there like that. Um, this side is pretty tight. This side <laughs> is tight as well. We can see we had to cut away quite a bit of that aluminum baffling that came with the kit. Um, now this is a Stutes, uh, Stutes STC. So that ST includes everything from the firewall, firewall forward. Other than like the Tannis heater, that was that was extra. I put that on, um, but anything to run the engine, all your hoses, uh, hoses, uh, new cables, and all that um, came with the came with the engine. So that's just kind of the overview of the installation of that IO three seventy. I thought I'd share. So um, that's it. That's all I can think of now. Catch you later.